brother. Oh my gosh, you guys, the first official full length Frozen 2 trailer has finally dropped and it is all that I can think about and there is literally so much to unpack. What is that horse thing? Is that a fire spirit? I want that canoe. Oh good, the trolls are back. But most importantly of all, giants. Woo, we totally called it, play the tape. Okay, now stay with me now. Giants. Yes, yes, yes. But as excited as I am that we correctly predicted the giants, I'm not totally sure that our reasoning was correct. Because now I am pretty sure that Elsa is in fact the last Icebender. <laughs> Guys, here we go. Water, earth, fire, air. It is staring us right in the face. Okay, so if you are unfamiliar with the story of Avatar The Last Airbender, then first of all, you should go watch it. It's amazing. The general premise is that our hero, Aang, is the Avatar and can control all four elements. But when we first meet him, he is only in mastery of air and still has to learn the rest. Now, normally an Avatar would have their entire life to learn all four elements, but Aang actually has less than a year because the Fire Nation is dangerous dangerously close to winning a hundred year war. And naturally, they are of course aware of Aang's existence and his potential threat to their cause. So they are constantly trying to hunt him down or just impede his progress along the way. I won't say anymore, just go watch it. And with all of that in mind, let's finally talk about the Frozen 2 trailer and how Elsa probably has a very similar skill set to Aang, you know, minus all the martial arts and stuff or with all the martial arts and stuff, that would really be a twist. Elsa is ninja. Probably not. When we first meet Elsa, it's as a little girl and she's already pretty much mastered her ice powers and she's using them exactly how you might expect to play with her sister. But after accidentally injuring Anna, the king and queen take her to see the trolls where they talk about her powers and warn them about their danger and then make some really interesting decisions about her future. Lock the gates, reduce the staff. We will limit her contact with people, keep her powers hidden from everyone. And I think these stipulations have always kind of struck the fandom of Frozen as a little harsh and over the top and ultimately largely unexplained. Like yes, my child has ice powers, probably should never let her see the light of day ever again. For safety. Elsa's understood interpretation of these rules is that if anybody sees her using her powers, they will deem her a monster and try to hunt her down. Which which in a way is indeed exactly what comes to pass in Frozen. Sorcery. This reaction does seem to confirm her parents' fears and affirm the idea that keeping her hidden was probably the best bet. And yet, as soon as she's able to control her powers, the town almost immediately accepts her, celebrates her powers, and treats her like royalty which is fair because she is. But so it does bring up a super fair question of like, was there ever any real threat to begin with? Like surely the king and queen could have found a way to introduce their daughter with magical powers in a positive light somehow. Unless they weren't actually all that concerned about the townspeople themselves, but rather the greater forces that may exist out there and see Elsa as a threat. Listen to those rules again with that in mind. Lock the gates, we'll reduce the staff, we will limit her contact with people, keep her powers hidden from everyone. How much protection could you really need from your own people though? Like you live in a castle with armed guards. In Avatar, the thing that always gives Aang away is the fact that he is an airbender and the Fire Nation had wiped out the rest of the Air Nation and he is the only one left standing. Because the fact that he can airbend at all is all but proof that he is the Avatar because he would be the only one who could do it. So what if the reason why they don't want the world to know that she has ice powers is because having those powers specifically would be an indication that she is a much greater threat. And I know that it might seem like it, but I'm not just grasping these ideas out of thin air. The trailers from Frozen 2 have done a lot to convince me that Elsa is capable of a lot more than we've seen before. First of all, as of this second trailer, we've seen evidence of not just ice power, but also air, fire, and earth. 
And if we toss back to the first movie, we can actually hear one of the younger trolls say, Iron my fire crystal. Lending some additional credence to the idea that other elements could also be controlled. Especially when you consider it's coming from one of these trolls who are the exact people that the king and queen take Elsa to in relation to her problem with the powers to begin with. With that in mind, we can go back to our initial interpretations of the runes that we've seen in the teaser trailer with kind of a new lens to look at it through. Our first time around, we interpreted this top left rune, Isa, as ice, and I continue to stand by that because it fits perfectly. Then, just for funsies, I decided to figure out whether or not there is a Nordic fire rune, and turns out there totally is. And this is the one that we did correctly interpret as the Thursias rune. We just took the wrong interpretation where we thought giants, which to be fair, there are giants, but this rune can also represent fire, which got me thinking, is it possible that in this scene where we see fire, that it's actually Elsa herself who caused the fire? And I think yes. For one, you can see Kristoff grab Anna and kind of rescue her from the situation. But if you look in the background, you can actually see Elsa on the ground back there. Why would they leave her there? Or is Kristoff actually saving Anna from her in a way. Not that she's doing it on purpose because we've also seen Elsa trying to put out a fire in a way rather unsuccessfully. And it might be because the fire is just melting her ice or it could be because she's actually in control of both the fire and the ice at the same time. Plus we have another scene where fire seems to just be jumping around totally out of control, which to me feels like a moment where it would be coming out of her for the first time and she has no control over it at all. In fact, and I'm not trying to draw too many conclusions here, but the same thing actually happens to Aang the first time he experiments with fire as well. So that's fire. But if we go back to our snowflake, we have another one here that we had previously interpreted as the Inga's rune, which represented Elsa's isolation. But the diamond rune can also be the Ingwas, which represents the Earth God. And once again, this new trailer gives us some evidence that Earth bending could be a thing in the form of our giants. To me, the giant definitely looks like it is made of stone or Earth of some kind, but it also bears a striking resemblance to the ice giant Elsa made, Marshmallow. So either Elsa also created this guy and is hiding from her own creation, or it might be evidence that they run into someone else along the way capable of similar powers. And so that just leaves us with air. And I will tell you, I wasn't even surprised at all when we looked up alternate meetings to the Tiwaz rune. Initially, we assumed that this was representative of the sacrifice that Anna makes at the end of the first film. And indeed it could be, but the Tiwaz rune also has another meaning. Sky God. Honestly, feel a little bit embarrassed that we didn't catch this the first go around, but also not that embarrassed because I do feel like the second trailer gave us so much more information to go on to suggest that Elsa might have control of more elements than just ice. First of all, let's talk about the diamond shaped floating runes we saw in the first trailer. In the second trailer, we now know where they came from. Elsa herself. But when she creates them, it doesn't exactly look on purpose. It looks like they almost like exploded out of her. Anna definitely looks concerned about it. And I can't imagine that Elsa would have like included all of these little runic markings on them or even have any idea what they mean. But we do. We just revealed all of them. Ice, sky, fire, and earth, all coming from inside of Elsa, signifying that she doesn't just have powers over ice, but the other three as well. And that's not even the only clue we get to come to this conclusion. We also have this little scene where this spirit is dancing around Elsa. It kind of starts out as a horse, which dives into the ground and reemerges as the giants, which then dissolve away into these leaves that then swirl off into a transition. But I think this scene is also foreshadowing Elsa's ability to have control over all four elements. First is the horse, which definitely would have felt like a bit of a mystery, except for earlier in this very trailer, we actually see a water horse. And we actually know from Scandinavian folklore that this horse is what's referred to as a neck. These can take a lot of different forms, but often is in fact a horse and its objective is to lure you into the water and basically drown you. Though to be fair, it does seem like he is giving Elsa a pass. Either way, that covers water or ice. Next, we see the giants, which look like they are made of stone, which would cover 
Earth. Those kind of dust into leaves blowing around in the wind, giving us air. And in case you were wondering about fire, I think that is what we will see in the full length movie, which they are cleverly using here to just kind of give us a bright burst of light to transition to the next scene. It's actually kind of masterfully put together because without any context at all, you don't have any context. You have a horse, some giants, leaves, and a transition. But once you know what you're looking at, it almost seems kind of obvious, especially paired with the final scene of the trailer where we see Elsa walking up to a foggy area that parts to reveal four stones, each indicating one of the four runes. And doesn't it just seem like you'd have to be able to control all four things in order to enter here? Yes, Elsa is the avatar. She can control all four elements, calling it right now. Jay, my question for you and everyone else is, what do you think? Is Elsa going to be way more powerful than we've ever seen her before? Be sure to leave your thoughts in the towel section down below. But guys, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to see some other ways that Norwegian culture has been incorporated into the movies, you can check out this video right here, which explains the ice harvesting scene at the beginning of the first movie, or this video right here, which explains this weird, like which way to stack wood thing. That's like a huge debate in Norway. But Jay, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you on Tuesday.